Well, hello, everybody. I am Spectacular the Silver Stacular. It's a nice day outside here in Florida, but as nice as it is outside, I want to go inside. I want to go to this coin shop right here, talk to the owner, coin guy, find out about coins, maybe precious metals, maybe just talk to a friend about what's going on in the world and interesting things. So come with me now as I go into coin guy shop and we just talk about things going on. Well, hello, everybody. I seek to educate and entertain through my journey of collecting coins and stacking precious metals. I encourage you to subscribe and please stay with me on this journey. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. All right, here he is, Mr. Coin Guy at his shop in Spring Hill, Florida. Yeah, crack your neck, get this ready because we're going to be here for a minute. We tend to do long videos together. Yeah, we tend to talk about things, ramble a little bit, but that's good. That's, that's what a coin st store is about. If I was up, if I was further up north, I'd have a little wood-burning stove and chairs around it. Where all the old men sit around and talk. That's what you need—a little, little—I uh, don't know—chair and table. Wood-burning <laughs> stove. <yeah. laughs> Maybe a little coffee, a uh, little you know dispensary over there. You know. Yeah, could do Maybe that. Nice. Could do that. So. If it's okay with you, we'll talk about coins and metals and maybe some other things today, too. I mean, I don't know what we've got time for, but uh, I want to kind of mention things about uh, this term, well, terms, the collector gene. Have you heard of this? Can't say as I have. So, like, you know. But I can understand what it applies to. Yeah, you, you get the, the point of it. When you buy coins and precious metals, and that's the hobby that we're in, we might see some other things when we go to shows that we'd be like, hey. That's kind of interesting too. We're just naturally collectors, it seems like. And it follows a lot of things. I agree with that. Um, I have brought in a couple of things that have I have bought at coin shows. Because um, anything could show up. If you go to any major coin show, if you go to fun specifically, you'll see a section when you walk in that'll say ancients. Then there's a side that says budget. But if you go over to the ancients, that's not only ancient coins you're going to find fossils. You're going to find, I don't know if you're going to find a Trojan shield or sword, but there's everything over there. And you can pick up some pretty cool stuff. I mean, I've seen uh, Egyptian, like Egyptian uh, carvings that they'll sell over there. Carvings from Egypt, huh? Yeah, Egyptian carvings. And crazy. it'll say the Middle Dynasty, which is like 1500 BC, the Middle Kingdom. That's why. That's the time of Moses. Wow. I mean, it's, it's, it's cool stuff. Let me show you a couple of things that I picked up. Yeah, please. You never know. Like what you can find at these shows. You never know what's going to come into your shop. And somebody says, hey, I have coins, but I also have this. And you're like, you know, do I buy that? Probably, right? Now this, this I bought oh, I'm excited. <laughs> in my store oh, years ago. You know it's going to be good when it's wrapped in paper towels and stuff. <laughs> this is an Olympic silver medal. Um, like, like an actual one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This just was never issued. Can I touch it? The 1908 Games in London. That's... That's pretty cool. Yeah. I had somebody look at it, and where the name would be would be right at the base here. They didn't have ribbons in these days. And the, right at the base here is where they would have the name. So this one wasn't presented. But somebody looked at it and thinks they took the name off because maybe they sold it for the silver. There were only 260 made, if I recall right. Quantity should be on here. Silver, 260. How come it was only 250 gold? Some people got, instead of gold, they gave somebody silver. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, 260 known. And if it had the name on it, oh, I see, yeah. from what I understand, it would be a couple of thousand dollars if the name was on it. 1908. So this, the first Olympics was in the modern Olympics was 96. This is the fourth Olympiad. I should say that on here probably. Yeah, fourth. Yeah, should be the fourth Olympiad. This is wild. I think it's really cool. It's, it's amazing how this trickles out. To people you know like i've taken it to try and get nobody else certified but it's it's that's it's the, the real deal yeah. i mean that's that's fantastic i've had the guys who deal in metals tell me it's a real deal 
I mean, they think that without the name on it, it's probably worth seven or eight hundred. If it had a name, it'd be twenty eight hundred. The artwork on it is oh, it's really absolutely nice. fantastic. Yeah, this sits in my curio at home. I mean, I would love to see this on an actual coin. You know, this is cool stuff. This was brought into somebody in the neighborhood, and he and this person offered him silver for it. <laughs> That's cool, guy. Yeah. That's, uh, I did not expect to see that. That's a cool thing. That, that came in the store. But you can get all kinds of things. Now, you would see this maybe at a, uh, at a, at a coin show, and then you have stuff like this. Now, I was at uh, my 110 show where I grew up in, and a museum went out of business. You call it a 110 show. What is that? What it is... was on Route 110 in Melville. Ah, okay. It still runs. It's been running since, I think, 1963. The second and fourth Sunday of every month. Is that a meteorite? It's a meteorite. No way. Yeah. That is awesome. I would uh, say that this is uh, outer worldly. Yeah, it's outer worldly. <laughs> Let's hope that something doesn't come up. If you leave it, this is in my curio at home too. Brian saw this when he came to visit one day and he goes, I want that. I said, stop divvying everything up. I'm right here. Your son, Brian. <laughs> Can I, uh, sure, go ahead. I've never, I don't think I've ever, and this to my is knowledge. A, sometimes they're little chips and they get $15 Jeez, for that's, them. that's heavy yeah. for that chunk, huh? Well, they're, what are they, like iron-based, right? Of course. Yeah. Anything that's more mineral or, or sand, it would have, it, that's when you see it hit the atmosphere and explode and all those sparkles. This is the stuff that makes it to the earth. This is one of the cooler things I've seen in a while. Now, if you have a, as a New York kid, you would go to the Hayden Planetarium, and there's a gigantic meteor right there that's the size of the Remington. I mean, it's it's gigantic, the size of a washing machine. The size of this thing right here? Yeah, it's gigantic, and it's sitting right there. It hit the Earth in I don't know what year it was. Can you touch it? They let you touch it or not? Yes. Well, they did 50 years ago. Yeah. I mean, I was in Philadelphia back in 73, and you could touch the Liberty Bell then, the crack in the Liberty Bell. You could touch it. Now it's on the glass. Yeah, now you got people who want to put their yep. chewing gum on it and stuff and write on it with a marker. Yep, and when I was a kid, <laughs> when we used to go to the Museum of Natural History and you go up to the paleontology room, you know, up there where the dinosaurs are, and they got the big T-Rex's head, I used to be able to touch that. And I remember touch, because it's like when you go, when you're a kid in the city, you go there in third grade, fourth grade, every year, the Museum of Natural You can't, the Museum of Natural History, you can go to, every day for a year and still find something. It's just so big and so incredible. And um, you you would go there, but now the, the big head of the T-Rex is under plastic. Everything is covered with plate, can't touch it. Man. So I can't get those jeans in me. <laughs> what can I tell you? This is cool stuff, man. Would you ever consider selling no. the meteorite? Oh, man. Oh, I would love, if you ever consider a guy, I would be your meteorite guy. I would love to have that. Yeah. Here's something else I bought. When I bought this, I bought this. It's like an arrowhead or something? What is this? No, thing? that's a dinosaur tooth. A dinosaur tooth? I should have trouble getting that out of ah, my thigh. Spinosaurus. This is wherever this, this guy is. This is the one on Jurassic Park with the giant fin. Yeah, this thing. I bought this 11-4. I bought this 18 years ago. That's 18 wild, huh? years ago. That's who it came from. He's still looking for it. <laughs> I don't want to be there the day he's looking for it. Yikes. I want them to find the amber and make them come back and then maybe make him come back. And That was my tooth, man. What are you doing? Yeah. That belongs under my pillow so I can see that fairy. Didn't you say you picked <laughs> up a tooth recently? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've been in this this weird, I don't know, thing where I just I want to collect these things all the time. I'm going to show this thing to you. It's in my pocket. Um, it's it's kind, of, kind of crazy. But I've, I've been addicted to these things. That's this right nice, here. Nice size. Oh, yeah, good. Grab it, I think. Now, look at that. See you know what that belongs to? This is a mala uh, Malegodon. Yeah. Giant prehistoric shark. Old giant Megalodon, too. Megalodon. Or a big person's fingernail. Yeah. <laughs> this is big thing, which brings to mind this. Uh-oh. What do you got? Isn't that ridiculous how big it is? I mean, my hand and then a tooth. What would that do to you think if you were underwater? It's a little bigger than mine. Just swallow, just swallow you entirely. Oh, you got one too? I got more than one. 
Oh, you show off. You always have to show off, huh? Let's see what you got. Oh, that's cool. You got a whole bunch. Well, that's a nice one right there. That's gonna be very comparable. It's your, is yours bigger than mine? Uh, it's about the same. Oh man, size matters, you know. That's cool. That's like that one here. Yeah. That's neat. Now you see this? Yeah, I learned and this when I some now these come out of the ocean. Yours comes out of ocean. See this? Mm -hmm. These, these were chiseled out of rock. These would have came out of North, uh, I think South Carolina. The guy told me. I have seen the videos where like it's like literally just not like a mountain, but just like in like a like a hill stuck in there, and they're digging yeah, it away. In the inland sea. Yeah. That's where the water used to be. Um, I guess that's just what happens. And these are all, most of these are Melagodon. I think this is Mako. And you know what this is? This, this, they tell me that it's whale doo-doo. Whale doo-doo. Whale doo-doo. Petrified. It's got a name. I don't know what. I, I heard that poop, petrified dinosaur poop, maybe it's the same thing for whales, uh, called uh, corpolite, I believe. Okay. It might be something different when it's in the water. Okay. I don't know, but you have poop in there. And I got arrowheads. How, how do you pronounce this again? How do you pronounce it? Megalodon. There you go. <laughs> and when I got little guy, my grandson, and I love little kids, because when he looks at this, I said, guy, you should have seen the trouble Pop Pop had pulling this out of the shark's mouth. Yeah. God, he wouldn't sit still. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's funny because my kids now, they're doing the whole tooth fairy thing, you know, tooth under the pillow. And I have all these now. I got a few of them. I'm kind of addicted. And I'm like, I wonder what the tooth fairy would give me for these. And I bought most of these at one <laughs> time. Um, I was in a mineral show where the guy had a smaller case about the size of the inside of this. And he didn't have quite all of these, but at least two thirds of what's here. I think these I added, a couple of them I added to it. But he, you know, I talked with him, negotiated, and I had a good day at the, a good week at the, at the store, and I bought the whole case. I bought everything. Would you ever sell something like this? No. This is yours? This is mine. This is in my office, in my, in the library, in my office. It sits on top of a table. I'm glad you showed this to me, it. because this gives me an idea, because I'm trying to figure out but how I'm going to display mine. See, this is part of, like, I don't know whether, now, if, if you, you know, if you've been a coin collector long enough, and... The guys always drag their wives and their girlfriends to the shows. And coin collecting is, I'm going to be go out on a limb, and I don't want to be, you know, misogynistic or any of that, but it's like 95% men. Yeah, majority men for sure. It, it's absolute 95 men. I mean, I think I've known in the 50, over 50 years I've been going to shows, I probably have known three or four women who do it. I had Mrs. Callahan, I remember, learned a lot from when I was a teenager. And she was the only woman in the, sh in the, in the room back in the early 70s, um, so over 50 years ago. Um, very few women collect coins. Uh, and basically, aside from jewelry, I think, you know, this is basically stamp collecting, coin collecting, certainly sharks, teeth. Men collect things. They just... It's in our blood, whatever it may be. Some guys collect guns. We're the hunter-gatherers. Yeah, I guess that's part of it. <laughs> and if I think it's cool, I got it. You know, you look at a lot of stuff in this room. My wife calls this my man cave, extension of it. A lot of it isn't for sale. Somebody wanted to buy my, uh, somebody wanted to buy this yesterday. Fool's gold. Ah, uh, pyrite, right? Yep. I said, nope, not for sale. And it's not overly expensive, right? But it's you offered just... me five thousand. I said no. Five thousand? No, I made that. I might have said. I might have. <laughs> I might have <laughs> sold that. <laughs> Fifty dollars, you can have this. You know I mean? <laughs> but I'm not selling it. I think it's nice size. It's cool. That's your fun little uh, thing to. You know, you know, you pick up. You get this guy was somebody who was in West Africa. It up I your bought shop. this at. A, I bought this at a garage sale. Oh, when I first about fifteen years ago. His parents were wealthy, he said, and they used to sail all over Africa. And they, they bought this from a tribe on the west coast of Af the east coast of Africa back in the 50s. It was like a striped donkey or something? Uh, no, I think it's a giraffe. I think it's a, a zebra. <laughs> I think it is a zebra. It's a zebra. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> well, it could be a giraffe if you put it this way. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, that's a zebra. That's cool. I don't. I think it's a little too much belly, and that should have. Yeah, he's got legs. some short legs, so but, maybe you know, he's, he made it with a donkey at some point. The guy it's fine. Was, you know, carving this, he didn't. I guess he couldn't chase it and knock him down. A zonkey, they call him. You know, they zonkey. <laughs> but it's it's things like that. But I got all kinds of stuff. I, you know, I, at home I got. I got curios with stuff. Maybe I'll bring another, but I got other fossils. I mean, but uh, you, it's you, just... you put stuff on the walls and stuff, and, and we probably do that at our houses too. Collectors do. I know I do. You know, I want like the, you sold me a sheet of uh, different bills. Yep. Remember? And that, boom, into a frame on my wall. But this goes into the idea about how collectors of coins collect all kinds of things. And if you go to very large shows, you're going to see fossils. You're going to see jewelry all the time. Um, as I said, any major show is going to have the jewelry out there too, because as I said, the philosophy is if he can spend a thousand on a penny, it might cost you a three hundred dollar pair of earrings. That's how the girls think about it, and I understand that. Um, today I had a guy come in and buy a one ounce gold coin, and she bought uh, what did she buy? No, she bought the gold coin, and he bought uh, a silver round. Ah. Yeah, she bought the gold coin. Very cool. Now, speaking of gold... Thanks for showing me this guy. I'm going to take mine and put it back in my pocket. Okay. It's my pocket piece. That's so crazy. But you but you can buy... This was at a regular coin shop. You know, I'm talking something with 40 tables. My kids are really into dinosaurs right now. They would love that thing. But it was some, uh, it was some, some kind of a uh, museum that went out. Well, that's what they told me. And I said, nah, I got to have this, and I got to have that. And then this came over the counter. Yeah. I bought this years ago. Listen, again, if you ever change your mind, I'm definitely interested in that meteorite. 260 minted. Nah, Brian will get it first. Oh, Brian, come on. Yeah. Well, yeah. Brian will sell it to me then. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. What do you, what do you think, guy, with these, uh, this whole Megalodon thing? You think that they might still be out there somewhere? I read books like that where they're under the layer of the thermal layer at the bottom of the ocean that keeps it a little warmer for them and they're swimming around at 30,000 feet underwater. That's science fiction. I, I don't think so. You don't think so? I think they're gone. I think there's a better chance of Nessie being out there oh, than uh, <laughs> a Megalodon. Ness monster, huh? Uh. But like I said, collecting is in the guy's blood. That's what we do. Not to say that we don't want uh, you know women in the hobby, you know? Uh, I hope that more women get involved. And... There are women in there, like I said, but they're far and few between. Yeah. And as I said, uh, growing up in, in the half a century, I've gone to shows. I mean, I've seen very few and only a handful who are dealers. You know, I know one now who's, who's a dealer. And, um, and that's about it. I mean, there's just not a lot of women in the game. And, uh, and collecting seems to be a man's thing. But whatever. It keeps you out of trouble. It, you know, there's a lot of people collect stamps. Some people collect, you know, records, whatever it may be. Keeps but, you out of uh, trouble until the uh, the old wife or girlfriend finds out how much you spent on some of these things, right? right? Now, speaking of gold and silver before, have you seen the prices this week? Uh, yeah, it dropped quite a significantly, right? Let's the see. Dow was down $1,000 as of uh, yesterday. The making 1,000 points. Yeah. Now, on Monday, Monday gold was about 2000 okay? Today closed at nine, yesterday closed at nineteen thirty two. It dropped seventy dollars. I locked in a bunch of scrap gold on Monday with my my melter. Okay, good. So I I bunch, a bunch part of it I melted. I just you know it was time to do, and I the good thing I did. Now silver lost two dollars. It's not good. Silver hit over twenty six on Monday, and now it's twenty four thirteen. So this one you got to understand when a dealer pays you a price. Especially when you're buying in different states of different laws, and you got to understand when you're buying bullion from a dealer, you're selling your bullion to a dealer. In Florida, I have to hold it 30 days. So if silver was 26 on Monday, and I offered you a dollar back, that's not unreasonable. Well, now I'd be a dollar behind already on what I'm going to make on it, and I still got three weeks to go. Who knows where it's going to go? Yeah. And I think most of this, two things I think really affected this. They're accepting the fact that, the, that they're going to raise interest rates a half a point. And that's going to make mortgage rates go up. It's going to make, it's going to make the 30-year treasury look more attractive. And stocks go down because of that. And gold will go down because of that. Um, 
that's the, the main thing is the reason. Um, the other thing is they're watching how the war is going. Um, I hope it comes to an end. Very much so. Uh, if it does, you're going to see gold go down. It will. Yeah. But for the interim, and because gold went down so much in silver, people had to cover positions in the stock market. With a thousand point drop in the Dow, that's what's killed the gold price too. Between a half a point increase and the Dow lost, I don't know, 1,500, 1,400 points this week, they have to cover positions. And what's the, always the money everybody turns to? They turn to gold. Yep. They have to cover positions. You also got the ETFs. You got all this digital gold that's out there being sold and traded in order to cover positions. Talking about but crypto, it's not, right? Yeah, not crypto. I'm talking ETFs, the contracts, 1,000-ounce oh, yes, yes, yes. gold, 10,000-ounce silver. And all of that whirls back and forth. And we've talked about before the death of money, the book. They can't cover 8% of what they sell. So if that's why you have to divide, you have to separate physical gold and silver. I don't know. The, the big boys will never do it because it doesn't fit their agenda. Because they make a fortune squeezing a few dollars between cryptocurrency and ETFs and gold and silver. You know... <coughs> At, if they have settled up in 10 days, in 10 days, they can make $50 million. You know, it depends how much they got to play with. And that's where it all goes. It goes out the window left and right. And that's affected the prices. Definitely affected the prices. What's your advice now? We've dropped uh, significant amounts. You keep, you keep buying. You don't, you don't sell. You don't panic. Nope, I don't panic. I mean, on the gold I sold today, I made only a, I made 20 bucks in a one-ounce gold coin. Yeah. Now, does that pay? No. Not if you pay... Almost two thousand, and you're selling it at two thousand. You didn't. You don't handle. And it's like I said too. When you buy and sell a one ounce gold coin, you're handling four thousand dollars between buying and selling it. You ain't doing it for twenty bucks. I keep my money in my pocket. I mean, it's just not enough for the risk. Yeah. I think you have to make sixty to one hundred, and that's not unreasonable. I mean. You got a shop, you got employees, you got to worry about yourself eating. Well, I mean. they don't seem to understand that. <laughs> it's like I was talking about before when you look at the premiums on silver and gold. I think the premiums are holding up. I can't get eagles. Nobody's bringing me eagles. I've got 90% still, even though I sold a bunch this week. Um, people are buying. They're still buying the gold. I had five one-ounce gold coins I bought on Monday, and they're all gone. They're all gone. I got a couple of other interesting gold. I got this in. Now, there's an interesting gold coin. I think we looked at that one last time. It is a super nice piece. What do you think about um, these things right here, these green the stickers? Cack? Yeah, a little cack sticker. What's your I opinion? have mixed feelings about them. I almost think it's a hustle, but it's been accepted. I, I sold a um, three-legged buffalo about two years ago. It was in a VF. VF goes for $45, $450. It was a VF30, CAC. A VF was $450, an XF was $550, and an AU was $680. I got $650 for it. Whoa. A VF30 skipped extra fine and was knocking on the door of an AU because of the CAC sticker. Because of a green hologram sticker. Exactly. <laughs> I mean... Which I but, think is just like a double check, right? If somebody yeah. else is going like, hey, yeah, I agree. And I believe in this case, this coin's got a lot of pop. It's got some nice luster. I mean, this is more than a one. Uh, it's got a little chatter. Um, I don't see why this isn't a two. I'm a complete novice here, of course, yeah. and I see this as being better than a 61. Yeah, that's, well, that's how I feel, too. And this price... Is, well, there's no listing for 61 in gray sheet. It goes from two to three. And a two would list for about 3,100, which is the price I got here. But it is a 61 with a CAC, and I think I think it is a two. Nice uh, too, Carson but City. this coin goes one more point, jumps to 7,000 in a three. Jeez. It's a CC. That's yeah. the coolness of it. You don't, you don't see stuff like that, yeah. especially CC, old gold. Yeah, you don't get... I've only handled a couple in the... Thousands of gold coins that I've handled. I've only, I probably haven't had five CCs. You just don't see them. I've got a couple of Uncarson cities. Um, 
I had the gold. It already sold. An old Italian coin came and went. You had a few little pieces of gold here and there. Yeah, this is more fractional I've, I've probably had in the last two months. I had more. I sold a couple of tents, a um, couple of U.S. tents. Just whatever um, comes in the door, huh? Yeah, it's whatever comes Ooh, across the counter. You got some SVDBs in here, huh? Wow. Right here. Right here. Yeah, man. That's a hard coin. Yeah, low grade, but still hard to find that, huh? Not a low grade. It's a VF. I mean, you know, it's not an it's a 25, but, you know what I mean? You, know, you, get, you get that coin AU, so I'll pay him twice that price. Yeah. It gets to be, you know, out of the average guy's pocket. Here's a poured one kilo bar. Let's see that bar real quick. That's kind of a, a nicer bar. Somebody was telling me it has to do heavy, isn't it? the cooling. <laughs> well, it's, it's compact. That's why it, it looks like it's wafered here. Something to do with the cast they pour it in should have been warmed up first. And it almost looks like it was different plates melted together. It might have, might but have this been like is a an older one. Pour too, huh? It's maybe the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Sometimes these things right here have some significant premiums on them because they're, you know, certain types of bars. Maybe they don't pour these anymore. Maybe the yeah. company doesn't exist. And people collect those. Oh, yeah. Because this is an older one. I mean, I want 30 an ounce for it. Yeah, it's 960. That's super reasonable. Somebody's going to steal that from you. That's cool. Silvertown. That bag of German coins gone. Oh, from the last yeah, video? Yeah, I remember with the last video. What is this the one? Austria and here, but I had the German bag. Somebody oh. called and bought that today. Then a dealer called from uh, Philadelphia, and he wanted it, but it was already too late. All from a video. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. The videos work. Yeah, man. My son was right. This new fangled form of communication does work. Yeah. That's why I'm the old man, I guess. I was just talking to somebody today. Uh, they asked me, you know, hey, how's YouTube been? And I said, good. I said, I, th I think all this stuff is good for the uh, the hobby and stuff, you know. Oh, absolutely. All the social media, Instagram, Facebook, although some of that tech stuff is driving people crazy right now, it's great to show people coins and get people interested. And in coin collecting in general, I think, has been popping because of social media. I had somebody in today who bought a bunch of stuff. He came in from Hawaii. Hawaii. He went to Disney, and I mentioned Disney. Um, <laughs> he went to Disney, then he came to see me, and he brought me gifts. Oh, he got gifts? You got to come back from uh, Hawaii more often, I guess. He left me his card. He's an accountant there. Good chocolate. They do have good chocolate. Why there, would huh? he bring me chocolate? That's what they got good I chocolate. Gave it there. away, and this is dark chocolate. Yeah. I had uh, somebody who does what I do on YouTube from Hawaii. He sent me chocolate, man. I ate that stuff up. I think he sent me these. I got to refrigerate this. It probably should. It's got this funny kind of macadamia. Yeah, because they're big for the macadamia nuts there, right? I don't know if I can spell that without looking at it. <laughs> you better cherish those, man. Macadamia nuts are expensive. Macadamia. <laughs> I pulled this out of the paper the other day. I like to pull these things and let people know about them. Yeah, we appreciate now, it. Now, I've seen these before when they first came out. The big holders like this, they're green. They're about this long. They're like four by two and a half or three. They're very odd shaped certifying. Uh, PCGS made them limited. They only made 700 of them. Now, I was at a show. My niece was getting married seven, seven years ago. I was at a show. And there was a $100 coin in one of these holders. And I went to this show, which was the day before the wedding, and we went over there, and I says to the guy, how much you want for the coin? He goes, the coin is 100 The case is 2500 Whoa. It's $2,600 for this coin. It was like a 90, It was like an 1806 good bust half dollar. You're but he wanted like twenty six or twenty seven hundred. You're supposed to buy the coin, not the slab. There's only about seven hundred of these supposedly known, and half of the collection is the Danny K collection of Israeli coins. Now I remember being at shows back in the day. Um, these are back in the nineties. I remember being at one show in particular where I think I saw about thirty of these out. I remember a whole case full of them. Wow. But that's, those times are gone. You're not going to see that many together. So sometimes uh, the way the uh, the hobby's been going, sometimes the slab itself is adding value. Yeah, oh, big money. Oh, absolutely. That's more than just that. Here's another one here that tells you about the gold reverse, the early generations of these back in 87. Mm -hmm. Now, I could have sworn I've had these, not with the CAC sticker, which, you know, makes it make 
40 times what it's worth. <laughs> but uh, this gold back, small little label on it. And these seem to have big premiums. I was looking around all over the store, checking the safe, see if I got any of these. I didn't know that. These I knew had big premiums. Well, I know about the old NGC. They call them the fatty holders. They got yeah. those. You got the rattlers yeah, from the PCGS. Rattlers, those, the those rattlers come in, right? I, have. I think I just got a rattler the other day. I People pay more for the rattlers. Oh, certainly they do because they were much more conservative. Here we go. Oh, this one isn't rattling. I'm going to drop it a couple of times. Make it <laughs> but it is a rattle. This is a rattle. Yeah, yeah. And so they call it a 64, but people will go, you know what? It might be a 65 just because those, they're those, conservative. Those, I believe, go back to 85. I mean, those rattlers have been around a long, long time. They don't stack well. They don't no. look great, but people pay a premium for them. Yeah, because they were more conservative, and sometimes they're... They become a wow coin was put in one of these that's a good price on that right there guy yeah well you know you look at some of the coins i've got a whole uh i picked up recently a whole collection of uh certified kennedy halves both silver and clad and when you look at a lot of them you can't afford to put them in the plastic i mean some of them i had in there were only seven dollars seven nine dollars you can't you can't slab them for nine dollars Maybe a thousand of them might cost you fifteen a piece. Yeah, I'm not sure what the rate is, but I know well, on the average, uh, the slabs when you have forty or fifty coins, you're paying a thousand bucks to get them insured and certified and mailed back and forth, just for the plastic. That's crazy. And I, you know, you put more unless you think you get a, you know, a, a holy cow kind of coin. Um, you know, you got to look at it. You look at even something like this. Now, here's a slabbed arrow. That's a pretty cool arrow. That is a super cool arrow. It's 15 bucks. I don't think you can get a slab for that. That's 15? Because, yeah, because you got to figure they're also going to want, because it's a variety or it's an arrow. So NGC will hit you for everything. They're going to want an arrow. $5 for this, $5 for that. That probably costs $40 to certify. Yeah, you're giving that away, guy. That's, that's one of those things. If you spend enough time hanging out with Guy in his shop, you know what I mean, getting his knowledge, you I might find that. And I, you might get a little treasure. I got to get enough money together to wrestle another shark to pull a tooth out. <laughs> I'm after a six inch. <laughs> Jeez. I got three five and a quarters. I need a six inch one. I'll tell you what, man. We're, we're going to have a contest because I can't let you have uh, one bigger than mine. I got <laughs> to be bigger than yours. And when it gets when they get bigger, I know I've been to shows and I've talked to the guys. When they get past that five and a quarter, five and a half, the, the double for every quarter of an inch. Oh, yeah. You know, a six inch probably... A six inch might run you twelve hundred. Yeah, mine. This right here was actually, I think, uh, I think I got it for a hundred and ten, hundred twenty bucks. That's a steal. Oh, it was it was a great price. It's about a five inch, you know. But yeah, like you said, yeah. I seen the six inch. Yeah. They want like twelve, fifteen hundred dollars for these things. Yep. And then from there, it goes, I know they they go up to like seven and a quarter. It's about the biggest. Seven That's like and the a record. Half. Yeah. They're like fifteen thousand dollars. Oh, forget about it. Yeah. I was at a show one time and there was a ten inch one, and then when you get closer, and I'm looking at it, and the girl goes, "It's cast." Oh, it's, it's not it's fake, got yeah. like 10 inch because the rule of thumb with the Molegodon was it's 10 to 12 feet for every inch. Yeah. So a 10 inch shark, a 10 inch tooth had to come from a 100, 120 foot shark. I mean, that's going to fight the Nautilus <laughs> and fight a you know, submarine. I mean, a 100 foot shark. Holy cow. I never heard that they got that big. I heard about 60 feet, but you know what I mean? You got I, fish, fishing stories in here. <laughs> no, I, I, I've heard 60 for sure, but I think they think they can go to 85. Really? Yeah, well, a seven, a seven and a half at 10 feet would be 75. All right, guy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give so. you some trivia right now, okay? This is, this is water trivia. Okay. Biggest animal that's ever lived on Earth. The biggest animal that's ever lived, are we talking like the ground sloth? I'm talking the biggest animal, water, land, whatever you want to do. I think it was the brontosaurus. Brontosaurus, final answer? Yeah. The blue whale that lives today. See, when you say lived on Earth, you didn't say in the ocean. That's part in of the Earth. ocean? No, I don't count that. <laughs> Terra firma is, uh, yeah, the blue whale is in the ocean. Yes. Yeah, I'll give you that. that I would have known, I knew that. But <laughs> you said on Earth, I guess you're right. I thought Did you I were trick talking you? the ground. I tricked you? Yeah, I thought you were of talking course, Of course land. you knew it, of course. I did know it. <laughs> Yeah, I just I find it fascinating. I'm addicted to these these stinking teeth. Uh, my wife, she goes, we should get one. And then once I got one, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna get a bunch. What you gotta do is you gotta get where they put the gold wire on this, 
and then you wear it. You bop in the, you know. You bop it a little bit? Yeah, and you're over there dancing yeah. with this, swinging by. You would break Hit your the neck. person next to you, cut their throat. Jeez. The big money on this, <laughs> on these, let's see if I have one. Is it serrations? It's, yeah, it has yeah. The more serrations, the better. Serrations. really intact serrations, it's worth more money. Serrations are worth more money than size. The tip is pretty important, too. You got a nice tip yeah. right here. This one's got a nice tip. Yeah, that has a really nice tip. Got, but it's this is sharp. You can't have just the tip. You got to have a little bit of extra Feel stuff this. too. Like this See, sometimes they do like this. This is lacquered. This is a buck and a half. That's why I probably grabbed it. That's a steal. That's very so, similar so what, to yours. So they, they, they kind of like uh, they purposed it a little bit? Yeah. Well, they lacquered it, brings it out. Oh, well, listen. If they brings lacquered it, it and yours is bigger than mine, doesn't count then. <laughs> that doesn't make it longer. Yeah, it's, it is serrated. I thought I had one that had really nice... Mine's very similar to this one right here. You can start to see on this, you see some of the serrations along here. Yeah. This one's a hundred dollars. It's probably what I paid for it. Beautiful serrations though. Yeah, but this has got really nice serrations. When you throw that on this, then you're probably paying a thousand bucks. Now look at that. You start talking museum quality. Oh yeah. Wild. Yeah. It's funny how you know so many things about different things and you just learn that. Uh, <coughs> and of course you got spear. I was at a woman's house once, oh, six, seven years ago, and she had a spearhead. Um, it was probably every bit, probably seven inches, but it was obsidian, which is what they call volcanic glass. Yeah. It's the black glass. It's very sharp. It's like five times sharper than a razor. And she had an, an obsidian spear point that was eight, years, eight inches long. Her grandfather dug it up in Florida while he was a farmer and the plow pulled it up and they had that. And yeah, that's cool. She wanted like $800 for it. And Might be worth that for sure. It, it may very well be, but I, don't, I didn't know at the time, how do I know it is an epoxy counterfeit? Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. We're not talking 80 bucks, it was $800 and this was a number of years ago. And I thought that was, that wouldn't. That would look good in here. That's the kind of spear point you need to fight a whale <laughs> or a giant shark. Or a giant shark. Yeah, it's crazy. They actually even look at that face. They yeah? fake these things. Sure they do. That's kind of to me. That's crazy. Well, those ten inch ones were fake. Yeah. You know, but these are cool. I like the colors in this, but this is because the minerals were absorbed in the bone because it was buried for fifty million years. And these came out of rock. These you, are carved out of you rock. You probably know. You probably checked it out, too. The way I, f I found out about these things is, like, what happens is, like, okay, shark's going along. Boom. It falls out of the shark's mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Into the ground. Kind of, like, goes underneath the sediment there. And, and like, the water starts, like, trickling in slowly. And those minerals, like, yep. fossilize it. That's what I and heard. And, you know, shark are forever losing teeth. Yeah. Shark lose hundreds of teeth. Yeah. It isn't like us with just two sets. They just keep rotating in. Well, they I, keep rotating in. I heard that a shark, about 25-year lifespan, one of these right here, Megalodon, allegedly, they don't really know, but you're talking 40,000, 20,000 teeth through its lifetime. Okay, I can believe Isn't that. Isn't that crazy? I was up in Charleston last week, and we went to uh, we were in a museum in Charleston, which was very, it was good, it was fun. It went through everything from, you know, the, the time of the Civil War back into prehistoric, and they had, a, a, they had a Melegodon skull there. Susan took a picture of me in front of it. And it had all these sets of teeth. And you can see where it probably take me with one bite, one oh, yeah. swallow. Oh, yeah. You know, Nathan, maybe two. <laughs> but me, one. <laughs> yeah, I heard like what, like a nine foot uh, wide like mouth there. That's nah, four feet for sure. But if you go in and you go in head first, you just, You're gone. it's just going to swallow you. You know, it's like eating a half a banana at one time. Speaking of Nathan, is he here today? Yeah, Nate's here. I had a question, and it's about, like, being a collector, um, you know, as a younger guy. Because I'm, I'm not really young in my opinion, but, you know, when I go to collect coins and go to shows and, and I talk about coins, it's usually for people that are much older, you know what I mean, than I am. Yeah. Um, Both you and I, yes. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, like, exactly the same age. Like, right? You're like a little bit older than me, just yeah, by, yeah. by a smidge. <laughs> yeah, like, tell me what it's like being a young collector. I would, um, I have an eclectic taste of collecting, I guess. Uh, I had a factuation when I was younger, and uh, I'll put it out there, I'm not 
I don't represent the party, but uh, um, I had to do a school project when I was younger. And one of the things that it was about was like talk about an important part of history. And you got to chose whatever you wanted. And I chose the uh, assassination of JFK. I'm very big into the conspiracy theories of, of what happened with that. Ah. Um, for that aspect of stuff. Uh, so I do collect a lot of JFK stuff. Um, like I collect newspapers. I've collected a lot of stuff like, of that. Uh, as, as a collector of coinage wise though, um, I got some examples. Let me pull out some stuff. Like you that. got some stuff yeah, with you. Stuff I was going through it the other day, kind of looking through what I have. I like this shop. I show teeth, he shows teeth. I talk about being a young collector, he brings stuff in. <laughs> this is nice. He forgot where he put it, but this is cool. You know, also, uh, Nathan, after this, I want you to talk about, because you are a young collector, you're young in the hobby, and you do something that a lot of people wouldn't probably think of you as doing, which is being the president of a coin club, right? Yes. Yeah, I want to talk about that, too, and just kind of your experience with that. Uh, I'm going on, this is probably my, well, legitly third year of, of being president. Of third? Most, third year? Third year of Western yeah. 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 Oh, guy yeah. says fourth. Well, fourth year with the pandemic. <laughs> uh, I count it too, right? I count it. <laughs> okay. You know, salaries. Age. Yeah. <laughs> the president of a coin club. That's that's cool. That's an honor, right? I mean, it, it's fun. I mean, the salary is great. You know, you can't beat the salary. I don't year. think so, right? Next year they'll probably double it. You know? <laughs> uh, no, but it's a, lot it's of a work. labor of love. It's a labor of love. It's a lot of work. A lot of people don't understand how much actually goes into it. And I much respect to anybody out there that is members of clubs and that help run clubs of any form. I mean, coin clubs, any other club. I, I feel you. I understand. I appreciate your your your, your love and dedication to doing it. It's a, it is a lot more work than a lot of people think about. Um, a lot of it too is uh, we try we do try to uh, get interested in younger kids, and that's a hard area to get them interested in. I, I do have we do have a few young kids in our club. Um, guys done really good at going out and talking to clubs, our kids about our club, and the school systems. Um, but we do get a couple of them to come through. Uh, we have one kid that Jesus, I think he, he just comes because he's the most luckiest kid ever. Uh, we do a raffle. Yeah, we do a raffle. He wins uh, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> he's pushing me out of first place. Yeah. This kid buys like it's one ticket and he wins. It's amazing out of like fifty people. It's hilarious. He's a lucky dude. That's he's cool. He's really lucky. So I mean, it, you know, he, he gets excited. He stays well with it. So it's a lot of fun um, to do it. Uh, it's interesting to hear a lot of the. As a younger guy, as, as, as our age, I think one of the coolest things is from guys' perspective as well is the older generation of, of collecting and hearing stuff about certain things of coins that they've gotten to see and probably I might not possibly ever get to see. Um, I know some coins, you know, I'll probably never in my lifetime get to see, but I know guys probably seen some more of those and other collectors. Um, Held them in his hand and stuff, yeah. yeah. And the cool thing is just like having, <laughs> what was that one guy of our coin club? Uh, uh, oh, what was his name? Uh, one of my first meetings of going to the coin club, it was when God was still president, and he, he walks in and he goes, you want to see something interesting? I'm like, yeah, sure. He pulls out, gosh, what was it? Three three Buffalo coins. Oh, psh. Three-legged <laughs> in an NGC 67 hole. 67? Three-legged. Yeah. In his pocket. In his pocket, and along with the other 19. One, one of the only four in the world. Yeah. No. What do you think that'd be worth today? It was worth two hundred fifty thousand then. In his pocket, no big yeah. deal. Yeah. And then he had two. The other two <laughs> coins was the best known seventeen D and seventeen S, and they were worth respectively fifty sixty each. He had and, like three hundred three hundred fifty thousand in three coins, and he was dressed like us, yeah. and it was in his pocket. Just, just another up. day. Just pull him up. That's crazy. He, put, uh, he was putting a registry set together, but then apparently he was upset because somebody beat him out for. I forget which one. Yeah, he got outbidded on, so he couldn't finish his register set, set to have the one of the best ones. So he went out and bought uh, some of the better ones just to make but sure see, that, that nobody else could be, get the register set either. That goes to tell you, you never know what you're going to find in Spring Hill. Yeah. Yeah. So what'd you bring in then, uh, Mister uh, uh, Young Collector? So I col I don't I collect interesting stuff. I guess not really collecting. I like to have like one of certain things. Um, Everybody's different. Yeah. Um, some sort and some examples is kind of just gimmicky stuff is like, you know, the Bitcoin. And then you got Oh, you're stuff. a Bitcoin guy. Yeah, I got in the There goes currency. your respect with all the older crew right now. And then, <laughs> and, then, and then got one of those in case I have to get oh. into the, the, uh, the are, continent. Are you an assassin? Yeah, can't say anything on that behalf. <laughs> can't talk about it? Can't talk about that. Part. There was a gold version of that. Did you? Yeah. Did you part? Uh-oh, what? 
Oh, you're talking about the uh, the, the ones from yeah. John Wick? Yeah. You got the Continental. I have the gold one. Yeah, he has one. You got the gold one. Oh, one ounce gold. Nice. Yeah. That's cool stuff. That's some other, like the one stuff that uh, my wife, I try to get my wife every time I go to shows. My wife loves, loves, loves the um, the koalas. So every time, I, you know, one comes out, the newer one comes out, uh, I try to go and get her a new one for her. That's cool. Uh, that's she fair. loves that stuff. Those are, those are pretty coins. Koalas, kangaroos, yeah. that's all it's all. Kookaburra. Nice. Kookaburra. Like Same thing as a koala, ain't it? Uh, no. Nope. Sounds like it's spelled the same. <laughs> Kookaburra lives in the old gum tree. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually a zoo around here that has a kookaburra, and it does its kookaburra sound. I'll tell you what, that's a wild, wild sound, that kookaburra sound. Koalas just yell at each other and whine and stuff when they get kicked out of a tree. And stuff like that, I get, you know, I kind of like that stuff, you know, since okay. I was a kid of the, that era, uh, you know, Spider-Man, Iron Man. Dude, this coin right here is worth a lot of money there, Nathan, you know that? Don't tell nobody. Just, that's the, 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 the Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. That's I had somebody looking for a werewolf. Uh, werewolf. Little oh, I just got that one. Oh, okay, yeah. I got one last month. Is it the werewolf Frankenstein that set? I don't know. Tara uh -huh. took it. Tara took it for the little guy. Coin uh, guy. Coin guy. That one Spider Man he has is probably worth like over a hundred dollars. What do you think about that? Good for him. But isn't that ridiculous? Just a bullion coin like that? Well, you know, there's people who buy a handbag for fifteen thousand dollars. What can I tell you? Yeah. Right. Get the world of dragon right there. You got yeah. Trump. My wife likes dragons and stuff like that. So a lot of dragons. Oh, and then when I have to have one of those, uh, my my son is actually named after a guy a lot of people don't know. Oh, and um, we did we have our kids lots of names. I guess is a good way of saying it. My wife and I can never decide on a good middle name, and so we like to go family names and stuff. So we we, we named them after a guy, and they were like, all right, well, what about middle names? And um, we came across, and we're like, what about Odin, and so he's one of his middle names is, is Odin. So I gotta have a coin representing my son's middle name. That's a super Either strong please. name, man. If you if you name your kid Odin or Maximus or something, he's gonna be set up for life. Or guy, that's a pretty cool name. What is this? Some kind of Viking? Yeah. Oh. What gave it away? The cover. <laughs> Vikings, warriors of history. That's pretty cool. Nice box too. How come the U.S. Mint can't do that? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the Canadians, the British, they put out some cool boxes. But, I don't know. You're paying the extra money, you know? I don't know. It's just like everything else. What makes this? Is that Intaglio? Uh, I forgot who made this one. I believe you're right on that one. Am I? And then you got, like, the Fantastic Beasts wife, like that movie. Oh, I haven't watched that yet. It's a good movie. You should check it out. I did the Harry one. Potter stuff. I didn't do Fantastic Beast. Yeah. <laughs> I got time, right? Yeah. Maybe? Speaking of Coin Club, we had our 10th anniversary came up, so I got one of those. Uh, NGC slabbed them for us. Uh, oh, that's super cool. Yeah. You can actually... Just a side note of the business. You can actually get custom um, labels made if you want. You just got to pay for them to have them made. Yeah. Um, but NGC is always willing to do that to people. So if there's anyone else in other coin clubs that are interested in something doing like that, uh, some people are talking about using them as a... Yeah, it's too much. It's like an advertisement piece. Uh, yeah, fundraisers, something like that. A lot of people say they can do that. So we really have cool. to do that for Coin Guy. Yeah. They label? Whether it be, you know, some Morgan Dollars or some, you know, Eagles or something like that, we have to get yeah, you... Yeah, look into that. Yeah. I give away the dollars all the time. What are these ones? That's it's the one he's got there. Oh, just more of them? I bought a couple in a collection that came over the counter. So that's cool stuff. Yeah. Some of the really cool stuff I really like, and my wife and I really, we really enjoy. And this is probably one thing that we actually do collect more or less of. Oh. We love the break. No wonder stuff. I can't find that stuff in the store. Oh, yeah. When yeah. I come in, they grab it. We love the breakaways. We just think they're fun. They're cool. Yeah. Yeah, but try and break away. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're rough. <laughs> it, and it's it like, wouldn't make sense. Yeah. I mean, do you want half this ball? <laughs> if something goes down, this will be very beneficial. Yeah. You better have nippers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and then you have to have your you know, like your roll with ninety percent. You gotta have ninety percent. Oh, collection. see, okay, now now the older crew is coming back to you. Yeah, yeah, you gotta Better represent the ninety percent. I like. You that. Always have to. Guy preaches it, and I agree with him on that statement. You gotta have it in different forms, different abilities to, you know, use it in the future if you have to. I, fractional, I'm, yeah, fractional is good to have. Ninety percent is good to have, and then you go from there. You know, you gotta have that, the necessity stuff. Yeah, is what okay. I like to call the necessity stuff. But, um, Just the bare necessities. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, that's kind of more silver. I kind of build, and the wife and I like to collect is more of this kind of stuff. I had no idea, Nathan. Yeah. 
That's pretty cool, man. Well, I got into it thanks to this gentleman over here, you know. He got you into it. <laughs> yeah. Before that, I spent most of my money on CDs. <laughs> oh, you were a CD guy. Rock, CD. Rocking out. Yes. Yeah, so. This is like I was telling my wife the other day when we were driving up to, uh, up to Charleston. I said, do you got the CDs with you? Because we don't have a CD player. We don't? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Where's the CD player? Pay all that money, you don't get a CD player in the car? Anymore. Yeah, oh, I, don't, I don't have yeah. I don't have one in mind. They don't do that anymore. Obviously, I'm supposed to plug my phone in, I guess, and listen to everything from my phone into the car. And that's what she does. She I don't know how she does it, but she puts it through the uh, from her phone or through her iPad or something, and she gets it through there. I got these whole like a whole box of CDs that I refuse to throw away because I'm thinking one day I'm going to be able to use them again. But I get people call me about vinyl records all the time. Oh, they're hot. Yeah, they're big oh, right no. now. I, I remember my wife giving away all her little 45s. God, that must have been 30 years. She had the whole, the little box we used to have with the clip on it, and she had it full of 45. I remember 45s, absolutely, in the late 60s and the 70s. Yeah. That was the good music. Sounded better on them, right? Good music. Oh, yeah. Music that you could sing to, that you can understand, and another kid could listen to it and not think that, you know, got to wash your mouth out. <laughs> so, hold on now. Nathan, you were not into coins or silver, no. and then you met his daughter, yep. and then he got you into coins and silver, yep. and you became a well, he coin was a jeweler. Joint, jeweler. Yeah, you had that skill, that talent, and then you became a coin club president, mm -hmm. all because of this man. Well, yep, I got nominated. <laughs> you got nominated. Yeah, no, but like I said, yeah. <laughs> Who wants the hard job? This guy. This guy. This guy. <laughs> well, I was trying to get rid of the presidency. I was offering triple income. What I was getting paid, nobody would take it. Nobody. And he came along. Yeah, I guess. Like, no. It's Thank goodness fun. for Nathan. It's been fun. <laughs> no, I do. I owe, I owe this man my hobby of the joy and appreciation of it, and you know, the love of it came from it too. But now that you know, once you got an inch of it and you get into it, you really do get a new perspective and respect for it. And I think as a long, younger collector, I think that's the cool thing about it, is learning the respect of the coinage. Uh, the history more or less of it too and then you appreciate a lot more and gratitude of a lot of things for because of it yeah it's cool nathan thank you so much man yeah, no i had no idea like i said that this is <laughs> your cup of tea right here <laughs> Not the always behind scene guy. I, you are the behind the scenes guy. You're the the website guy, the uh, phone the ordering guy. Yeah. The web orders. <laughs> yeah. The mailer. He's the mailroom. So. And then you also uh, fix up jewelry on the yeah. side. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm fixing it up. That's cool. Well, thanks a lot. Guy, what about you, your experience? Because at, at one point, you were a younger collector too, right? You loved coins your whole life. Since I'm 10. What, what kind of went on there? Well, I didn't have any money. So the first, I told the story about how I got my first coin. I cashed in all the bottles that I found in the park in the garbage cans and cashed them in for two cents and five cents. And I was able to pick up my first Kennedy half dollar in 1964. I was in fifth grade. PS 165, and um, then when I became a paper boy, I started saving all the silver back in the late 60s. Then in the early 70s, 71, I got a full-time job because we moved to Long Island, and I couldn't find work anywhere in 1970, uh, 71, until I became uh, 17 years old. Then I got a job working at A&S, and um, I had money again. And I met other coin collectors, and then I found out where to go, and I started going to shows in 72, 71. Uh, coin shows, coin dealers, Rubenstein's, the 110 coin show. Um, the rest is history. That's awesome. I've gone, I don't know how many shows there, 700. Now, you talked about holding the silver. Like you, you, you found silver, you were doing your paper route, mm -hmm. and you held it back. Oh, uh, yeah. Why, would you, why did you do that? I guess because I liked the sound of it, because I was a collector, and it's in the blood of some people. Some people, some people collected bottle caps. Uh, when we were kids, we played a game called Scully. I don't know if you know what that is. I have no idea. It's something we. It's a chalkboard on the floor, and once again, this is a cement street kid game, and you would have different boxes all around, and you'd have a center box, and you use bottle caps. This is a poor person's game because you just need the bottle caps. And smart kids, what you would do is they pour wax in the bottle cap to weigh it down so you can control it. And you could flip it with your finger or you could slide it. And you had to go from one to the other and into the middle. And the other person following you could knock you out before you could get back in. 
that was a game called Scully. Huh. And there's people who collected things like that. Um, and then when I, as I said, when I got older, I started uh, going to shows, started buying from people I worked with. There were waitresses. I remember one waitress in particular must have had a tremendous box full of Walking Liberty half dollars. And I used to buy them from her for like 70 cents a piece, 65 cents a piece. This is like in 1972, 73, 74. Now, you may think that's ripping her off. It's not. Because you could go to the flea market and they had your pick for 85 cents a piece. Big tray. I remember a big Coca-Cola tray full of the one coin guy who was over on Saxon Avenue when before Sunrise Highway got elevated. I'm talking like 1972. And it was your pick for 85 cents a piece. Wow. For walking Liberty Habs. That's crazy, huh? And those were the numbers you worked with. And like, you know, Nathan's telling you about experience of things you've seen. I remember, like I said, in 1980, and I don't think I'll ever see it again, where people were pouring, pouring uncirculated rolls of walk-in Liberty half dollars into bags to be melted. Uncirculated. Imagine what got melted. It, well, I remember going through a bag when it, it came and went. By 83, silver was back to like $5 from 50 and I remember a guy at a show saying, any half dollar in here is $3 each, which was six times face, which was still a lot of money then. But I went through the bag. I found a AG, almost good, 21Ds, wow. 21s, 16s. I forget how much. I bought hundreds of dollars worth of halves off this guy. Extra fine walkers. Jeez. Maybe even a couple of, because obviously nobody went through this bag since 1980. That's cool. And somebody had paid, you know, a thousand dollar bag or five, a thousand dollar bag was going for thirty seven thousand dollars, thirty five thousand. <laughs> Wild man. And now a thousand dollar bag was worth six. <sighs> yeah, some people lost their shirts. Yeah. I mean, those were, those were heady times, and some people, as I said, I was doing it as a hobby, buying and selling too, but I was a professional cook at that time, and um, that's why I made my money. And the people and that I love my, the game. The people that may not realize why it went from fifty to five was because of manipulation from the Hunt brothers. The Hunt boys, yeah. Yeah. And nowadays you got to worry about the same manipulation. Like I said, there, you know, they had their family was worth eleven or thirteen billion dollars, which in the early seventies was incredible money. There were only a handful of families of people that had that kind of money. You know, you had the Hunts, you had John Paul Getty, you had Howard Hughes, to name a couple. Uh, nowadays, how many thousands of people, thousands of people are worth billion dollars? And there's thousands of people who have a billion but don't tell you. Yeah. If you get eight hundred million, I'm sure you can make a billion. <laughs> it depends what you value everything at. It's like when they tell you how much is, uh, you know, a member of uh, Congress who's the the head of the House, let's say, and they say she's worth fifty million. Some say three hundred million. That's a pretty big spread there. Yeah. And yeah, how did they get that money, huh? The difference. <laughs> <laughs> no. How did they come about that money? <laughs> well, uh, that's, well, that's a story for another time. We picked up some other interesting bills. Oh, yeah, yeah, show me that. That is, that's a nice one. I'll give you 20 bucks for it. Yeah. 25? <laughs> that is a pretty, pretty. So you would get, you would take this right here and you would say, Here's my $20 bill. I want a double eagle. Mm -hmm. And it would work just like that. Whew, that's so crazy, huh? Yeah, that's a pretty bill. And all the little threads in there, anti-counterfeit measures. Mm -hmm. That is pretty. What's the price on that one? $439. That's, that's a steal right there for a nice, big, huge bill. And look at the, you know, these are cool, but look at the workmanship, the artistic that went into this. Yeah. I mean, it's just outrageous. This is a nice one, too. Wow. Grant. I was telling you before that, that Grant bill, it's much more expensive than this. Um, big time monies is the one with uh, the silver certificate with Grant and uh, all the Morgan dollars on the back. Yeah. That's a, that's a big time, big expensive bill. That's cool. Um, I saw you had a tool, a tool, a light tool. Can you show me this thing? Oh. Kind of a tool of the trade here. This is something that will bring out imperfections. 
So you can find Wait, like, you the see all the folds in the middle. You yeah. can see it's been folded one, two, three, four, at least four times. So this is what somebody would use to identify yeah. those spots. And now this one says erasure. That means that somebody had a pencil mark on it, and it was erased. Now, I can't find it. It's done well. They did a heck of a job trying to find I don't know how they spotted it to begin with. It's just a cool tool. I thought it would be interesting to show you people. Know. See, a pencil mark I can work with because I can, I've can. erased pencil marks. That's no big deal. It's when you have that old blue ink from the <laughs> fountain pens of the 40s and 50s. That ain't, that's there forever. I mean, that's going to be there forever. So, you know. That's cool. Those and big bills one. right there are hot right now, guy. Yeah. Well, I've got some cool little bills, too. That, you know, like these here. Yeah. Oh, these are your serial I think number I've showed ones. these before. Yeah. Seven sevens, seven sixes, all kinds of numbers. Bunch of fours, more sevens. It's cool. And you, yeah. got a, you got a book of them. Whole book of six of them, five of them. It goes all the way down. And toward the end, back, you got the radar notes. Now, what's a radar note? That's where... I think I learned that from you last time, right? It goes both ways? Yep. Right here. Radar notes. The numbers nine, nine, run seven, the same nine, either nine, direction. Seven, nine, nine. Six, six zeros. Interesting. That's a cool bill. Guy, as always, I try to put your um, information in the description of the video. Um, is that okay if I do that with you today? Sure, no problem. I'll, I'll put that in there, and you know, I'll keep you on the YouTube as long as you want to be on there. I Man, I think people enjoy seeing you on there. I enjoy being on there. I get phone calls all the time, uh, and I get to talk to people. And Coin Guy will ship stuff out. Absolutely, right? no problem. Probably, actually, probably Nathan will ship it out. To be honest with you, Nathan will ship it out. <laughs> Nathan will take your credit card also because I'm, I'm not computer. Uh, you don't have to do that stuff. Computer literate. I don't. I should do it, but I, I don't do it. I just don't. You know, like we, like I said, somebody called me yesterday. I said, "You gotta wait till tomorrow." Give my credit card number. I said, "Wait till tomorrow." <laughs> well, the credit card guy comes in yeah. to, to to get your card. Takes your card number. So that's not. Uh, that's just not what I do. Um, well, fantastic, man. I appreciate you showing me. It's, it was fun to uh, say, hey, here's something I'm interested in with that tooth. And then you say, hey, look what I got, too. That yeah. was neat. So now I just have to outdo you and get a bigger one. No, I'd like to see it. <laughs> I think they're, they're pretty cool. I've always had a fascination for that. But that's, like I said, that's, that's why I love history. As I said, when, I, when, we, go, when we go on vacations, we go to museums. I appreciate art. Uh, you know, and I like history, and I, I like looking at dinosaurs. Until Susan says, "Come on, let's go." <laughs> We've seen enough. <laughs> but you're looking at those old bones. I saw this giant sloth. I don't think I've ever seen one. And they had this giant sloth in the museum that was in Charleston, and it was up on its feet like this thing was the size of an elephant. Really? My God, it was tremendous. And I guess they found it in what they call the low country down there in, in Carolina. And, um, yeah, that was impressive. I'd never seen one of those before, or I can't remember seeing them. Yeah. It was a, a big animal. I wonder why things were so big then, like, you know, I mean, in, in ancient era, you know? Now, I've heard and I've read it had something to do with the percentage of oxygen in the air. I've heard that. They said there was 2 or 3% more oxygen in the air at that time. Even with all those gigantic forest fires, even with all those giant animals having droppings all, the, all over the place, and those volcanoes exploding, the earth heals itself somehow. Yeah. But there was a higher, and that's why they had, I mean, I've seen pictures of nine foot centipedes, a thousand <laughs> feet, they got like a thousand legs. I mean, it's a gigantic animal, it's a carnivore too. That's you know, that thing rolling over you. Yeah. I mean, they with nine foot bugs, my God. You know, <laughs> get the raid. <laughs> you, what, wouldn't be an era for you, huh? No, it wouldn't be a time for me. <laughs> the volcanoes and everything going off. Yeah. Not good for my oxygen you levels You can't go either. swimming because you get uh, swallowed by a megalodon. Yeah, yeah. That's the out of the water. <laughs> it's like, oh, I like watching those uh, Jurassic Park movies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are fun. It's... I told you that story when, when Tara was little and she asked me about if I ever had a baby dinosaur. I said, no, honey, that was before my time. Go ask your mother. 
Uh, <laughs> ouch. I like that. Ouch. She just shakes her head. She tells him a little crazy. So, okay. you, you can get away with it. Yeah. It's interesting now, like when I was a kid watching Jurassic Park and stuff, growing up with that stuff, loving dinosaurs, and now my kids are just now getting into Jurassic Park. And uh, it's it's just neat seeing that turn over like that. It's funny how the kids get, you know, certain things they shouldn't watch, but Lily loves Predator. What? The, she loves the Predator movies. Oh, wow. Especially the newest one where the big 11-foot Predator comes after the other one. We're going to watch Predator. Okay. She watches Predator. Jeez. I mean... Other things, you know, she doesn't watch, but she likes to watch Predator. You know. Interesting. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. Keeps her out of trouble. Keeps them off the iPads. Yeah. Too much time on the iPads. It's a killer. <laughs> but, uh, what well, else? Guy, I appreciate you uh, letting us film your shop again. Thank it's you been, to uh, everybody who watches us. Uh, make sure that you, you, you know, join uh, Jesse's. Uh, Jesse's circle of uh, club, and give me keep giving me those four and five uh, stars, and help me along. Oh yeah, on your uh, your Google review. So if you do go to Google or whatever, and you type in Coin Guy Spring Hill, your shop should pop up. And uh, if you're a subscriber to my channel, so spectacular on YouTube, you should be also signed into Google, which means that you can leave Mr. Guy a Google review. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And give him a, give him a nice five star. You know, especially if you've done business with the guy. Yep. You know what I mean? And he's been. And a like good... I said, make sure you get me. I am not Coin Guy three two one. I get phone calls about that. That's not who I am. Uh, the last video we were just watching this Friday, Susan, we were watching it live, and Susan said, "There's some guy making believe he's you on here, and he's talking to people, and he's calling himself Coin Guy." What the heck? So make sure you got me when, you know. The real you, deal. The real deal when you're talking to me. And, you know, that's just the way nature is, I guess. But uh, They imitate. They say the imitation is the greatest form of flattery. I don't That's fine. Not, But not when somebody's selling you VG coins and calling them AU and you get mad at me for it. So uh, the people, just be careful. The people who say that are the ones that steal ideas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God bless America and let's just hang in there. Things will get better. All right, guy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.